Hey everybody, welcome back to Mega Man 3 on Nerd Herd Gaming. It's, uh, it's been a bit of a hassle for me, as my mic actually didn't record when I was recording the first time, so I'm having to do post-commentary. And this is actually my second attempt at post-commentary, I didn't like how the first one came out. Well, this is also not my first attempt at this stage as well. Um, I actually died quite a few times. Uh, some of that might uh, show up in a blooper video at some point. But um, this was uh, probably my best run at least. And uh, here you're going to see some very, yeah, careful uh, uh, tip of the toe huh, positioning there. Here are some very not so careful positioning. Oh well. So how's everybody doing today? Hope everybody's doing good. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm doing all right myself. Uh, go down to the comments section. Tell me a little bit about what's going on. Uh, love to hear from you. And uh, once again, there I go up using the uh, turbo fire. This stage uh, in the remix uh, of Needleman stage, this is a uh, I find it to be a rather interesting. Uh, one. The beginning portion of it with the giant needle traps and whatnot is rather annoying. Uh, but most of the rest of the stage I find to be a pretty enjoyable uh, experience uh, gameplay wise. We're coming up on the uh, first of the uh, Mega Man 2 bosses, uh, this one being Air Man. I really do not like Air Man, uh, mostly because his little mini tornadoes are always in the way, and because as he's attacking, he's blowing you backwards as well. It's really hard to, I find it really hard to jump over the little tornadoes. Um, and he is weak to Spark Shock, one of the few enemies that you know, Spark isn't optional. And boom! There he goes. Uh, at this point, I had gotten tired of redoing that fight, and that was just me cutting loose, going all out, you know, offensive, getting as many shots in as possible. And now we're coming up on the rush jet portion of the stage. Uh, this is an interesting challenge. Uh, I don't think I've seen any Mega Man game do this since uh, then. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, we're coming up on another death. Uh, right about now. But uh, this is a, a rather interesting challenge, uh, as the idea is to fly through uh, the, this portion of the stage on Rush Jet, and the idea is you have to pick up these energy capsules to keep recharging Rush Jet, otherwise uh, he does not have, Rush does not have enough energy to get you all the way across this, uh, this section. Um, However, of course, if you keep jumping, like you've been seeing me do this entire run, because Rush Jet doesn't use energy when you're not standing on him, um, you, you're able to conserve a lot of energy, which is important in this stage, because if you die, all those energy capsules don't respawn. And you're going to see there's actually several missing energy capsules from previous attempts. Because, once again, you're not seeing my first attempt at this. And, of course, um, if you don't do the jumping trick like that, it will take, um, I would say, most of those energy capsules. I'm not sure. It's been a long time since I've done it without jumping. But effectively, you're only able to go through that section once or twice, and then you don't have any energy anymore for Rush Jet. And uh, so if you die, oh well. You're out of luck. Now here I'm switching to Needle Cannon because it naturally rapid fires, and um, you know, it makes me feel better about using Turbo Fire. Uh, yeah, it seems a little more legit that way, I guess. Uh, this section that we're about to run through, sadly, uh, is a rather poorly performed section, which I did much better at the first time I came through here, and I'm very disappointed I have to show you this uh, run, because this is the one that actually succeeded at this stage. And there I thought that that little Met was going to drop a little lower than he did, so that's why I ran into him as I jumped over. And we're already on to another giant Met. This one's uh, going to go a little bit worse than the first one because uh, I get fewer hits on him. He doesn't want to drop down low enough for me to hit him, and when he does, I don't get the opportunity. Don't take my chance. And here I get a little worried about my energy getting low and foolishly waste an E-Tank because uh, at the moment I use the E-Tank. I'm not aware that he is like one hit away from death, and I don't take any more hits. Uh, until the next boss, actually. So, sadly, wasted a tank. And 
And uh, our next boss coming up is, uh, I should know this, I just watched it. <laughs> uh, Crash Man! Yes, Crash Man. Uh, and, uh, Crash Man has a nice, lovely, predictable pattern. He jumps every time you shoot, just like he does in Mega Man 2, and tries to drop a bomb on you. And, uh, if you do it right, you can get him into a nice little figure eight pattern. And, uh, if you do it wrong, you end up doing what I do. Um, his weakness is actually Hard Knuckle, which is kind of awkward because Hard Knuckle has a much slower uh, projectile uh, velocity than your arm cannon. So if you fire too soon, uh, he'll have already landed before you... and boom. At that moment, I tried to turn around and get one last shot on him, not realizing that that bomb was about to explode and kill me. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, with Hard Knuckle, if you fire too early, then Crash Man has... Uh, and there's too much distance between you. Crash Man's already landed again before the Hard Knuckle gets to him. And if you fire too soon... Wait, too soon? Too late? Uh, whatever. Anyway, it's, it's a little trickier to judge the distance when using Hard Knuckle. It's really, uh, better if you're right up on him, like I am there. And once I saw that, I tried a few more times to get right up on him before firing and failed miserably because I wasn't close enough, so he was already jumping. And now I've run out of hard knuckle, and now I've got to switch weapons quickly to try to get back to the arm cannon because I don't want to use the pause menu and I'm taking too much damage. And I just decided, the heck with it, went and just unload on him. It wasn't pretty, but it got the job done. And then we'll be going into the remix of Gemini Man's stage, which uh, is honestly not really that difficult compared to some of the other remix stages. There's a few more pits you can fall in at the very beginning, so, you know, but I mean, aside from that, not really that much more difficult. You've still got these little uh, guys that like to drop the fire killers on you, except for some reason now they produce blue flame instead of orange flame. I don't know why, it doesn't do any more damage or anything. But they've replaced the egg launching penguins with these little bug things that die in one hit. Uh, why? I have no idea. Alright, um. Anyway, uh. What was I gonna talk about? I lost my train of thought there. It'll come back to me in a minute, I'm sure. So, I've been considering, um, my next, uh, Let's Play. And, uh, I do want to do the, uh, do a couple more of the classic Mega Man games. Unfortunately, um, the Anniversary Collection saves your, uh, game by saving your password for you. Which is alright. Basically, you start up the game and it's already input your password. That's nice and all. But Mega Man 4, 5, and 6's password system doesn't save your E-Tanks for you. So, effectively, if you ever turn off the game when you're playing 4, 5, or 6, you've lost all the E-Tanks that you've collected. And, um... Unfortunately, I kinda need it, so I kinda need E tanks to get through those games. Uh, I kinda needed E tanks to get through this game. I am not perfect at Mega Man. I, I find it odd that uh, Capcom would remove E tanks from uh, the password system. Uh, mostly because, like, you know, the classic Mega Man games are not incredibly long. If you know what you're doing, you can easily finish one in under an hour. If you can do it without dying, you can do it even faster, I'm sure. Um, people who are most likely to need E-Tanks are also the same people who most likely are not going to finish the game in one sitting. So why would they remove E-Tanks from the password system? It's beyond me. Well, now we're coming up on Flashman. And for Flashman, you want to use the Needle Cannon. And uh, this just becomes an issue of just unload on them and you kill them quickly. So, uh, Mega Man, stop hanging out there, just going in. Get in there. Thank you. Alright. Flash Man. You'll notice that, uh, Flash Man's, uh, room here is, uh, designed the, the same as it was in Mega Man 2. Uh, mostly just because he follows the same, uh, attack pattern and whatnot. Now, this uh, next section, uh, this is a design flaw, honestly, because Mega Man can't jump high enough to get out of here, so you have to use a rush utility just to get out, just to get up there. Um, and uh, if somehow you have run out of rush, for whatever reason, don't know why, but if 
if you had, you, um, you're stuck. That's kind of what we call bad design. Don't do that. Uh, anybody out there who's thinking about getting into game design, don't, don't do something like that in your levels. Uh, this is a lovely little Rush Marine section, but it's rather short. And, um, how short? Well, it's over. Moving on. This is why I, um, yeah, stop and shoot things before you leave. Sometimes it gives you energy. It saves you on E-Tanks. These little uh, bugs continuously spawn out of the holes uh, or blocks up there, so it's a good place to grind if you need more energy. Uh, they're not much of a threat. They died at one hit. Easy peasy. And uh, we're going to be finishing Gemini's remix stage with Bubble Man. Um, as I mentioned uh, in the previous episode, Bubble Man is not weak to the needle cannon. You don't pop the bubble with a needle, you pop the bubble with a shadow blade, for whatever reason. Bubble Man's one of those where you don't really have to worry so much. You just equip the shadow blade, just unload on him, you do more damage to him than he does to you at that point. However, just make sure you don't jump as you're coming through that door. You are underwater at this point, don't forget, and those are spikes at the top of the ceiling. The instant death variety. Because that's the only variety in a Capcom game, apparently. Not well, a Megaman game, anyway. And boom! See? Like I said, you do more damage to him than he can do to you if you use Shadow Blade and just unload on him. And, uh, now we just, we're going to have a random Breakman fight for whatever reason. I have no clue why. So, while I'm fighting Breakman, uh, this is not going to be very good or anything. So, let me distract you by telling you a little bit of the story. Um, so Dr. Wiley is actually working with Dr. Light to build Gamma, a peacekeeping robot. And the story of this game is that Mega Man has been going off to gather energy for Gamma. Alright. Fair enough. Just wish they would you know, tell you some of that um, in game. You get that if you read the manual, but whatever. Um, the little cutscene that follows this was changed for the anniversary uh, collection. I don't know why. But eh, all they did was change the dialogue slightly, which is just one line, really. But that pretty much does it for this episode, so thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to Nerd Herd Gaming for more uh, for more fun. Alright, see you guys later.